Actual cuts in what? Defense? The Republicans aren't going to go for that entitlements. The Democrats aren't going to go for that. What about raising taxes? Well, again, a deal breaker. So if both sides are digging in, how the heck does this country move forward on the economy? Well, here with us to weigh in is investment broker, author, and financial commentator Peter Schiff. He's also the president of Euro Pacific Capital. Now, Peter, you ran for office. If you were in the Senate, what would you do to move this situation along? I mean, it seems like both of these sides have dug in and they're not willing to make any concessions. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I didn't win, uh, probably because I was telling the truth about these issues. Uh, most of the politicians want to demagogue it. I like what uh, John Boehner had to say today. In fact, I played that clip on my own show, the Peter Schiff show. Um, but the question is, is it rhetoric? Is it, is it just talk? Or can he actually walk that walk? I mean, he said everything is on the table. He didn't exempt Social Security. Um, so that, that's what we need to do. And I think tax increases, tax increases undermine the economy further and probably even worsen the deficit. Maybe we can have tax reform that moves away from taxing income and consumption, but we really need to go after this problem by going after the expenditures. And if he means what he says, the Republicans can dig in their heels, refuse to allow the debt ceiling to be raised, and if they do that, then the government has no choice but to cut spending. I hope they have the political fortitude to do that, but I wouldn't bet on it. But Peter, if they do that and we don't raise the debt ceiling and we do default on the debt or the market reacts even before that happens, there will be catastrophic consequences and that would mean there will be no Republicans to dig in their heels uh, when 2012 comes around. I mean, aren't the, aren't the consequences of playing politics with this sort of thing, uh, almost a game of chicken, more dire than, than the potential outcome? No, well, first of all, just because we don't go deeper into debt doesn't mean we have to default on the money we've already bought. Instead, cut expenditures. All it means is that we can't borrow more money. Uh, but, you know, we don't, we don't have to reduce the debt. So if the government makes the necessary cuts to other parts of the budget, then it won't have to default. But, you know, let's have an honest conversation. We can't pay this money back. We're like Bernie Madoff. We're just constantly hoping our creditors roll over their debt. But let's face the issue right now, because if we don't restructure the debt, we're going to inflate it away. I mean, nobody's going to get their money back. Nobody who's buying treasuries around the world has a prayer of getting their money back. They might get their dollars back, but they're not going to get the equivalent in euros or Swiss francs or Australian dollars or Chinese RMB, because we're going to inflate this debt away. It is impossible to pay it off especially when interest rates rise. I mean, we're able to service it now because the Fed's got rates at zero. But when rates rise, as they inevitably must, and the longer we wait to do it, the higher they're going to go, we've got no chance of servicing this debt with real money. Well, Bernie Madoff, uh, whom you mentioned, his fun experiment came to a crashing, fiery burn when he was sent to prison to rot for as long as it takes. So what's going to be the equivalent of that for the United States if we don't get the situation under control and, and, and fix things that, that we're clearly not acting on at the moment. Well, if we do not deal with these problems, if we try to keep printing money, uh, as Jimmy Rogers just said, the world's not going to take it anymore. They're not going to accept they're not going to send us their products for our paper. And then we're going to have to get used to living a standard of living that's actually based on our own production. And we don't have the factories anymore. We don't, we, don't, we don't produce all the consumer goods that we used to. We're relying on our ability to print, uh, to import the things that our economy doesn't produce. All we produce is government, you know, big government and, and, and big services. But that's not what we need to have a high standard of living. So we're going to have to come, uh, we're going to have to confront reality. And we're also going to have to deal with much, much higher interest rates than we're used to because we're not going to be able to tap into the world's savings anymore. If Americans want to borrow money, they're going to have to find another American who's willing to loan it to them. And there's not that many Americans with savings. And what do you think it's going to take to change the issue? I mean, lawmakers are usually looking out for their reelection cycle. The president has only so much power. I mean, could Obama be doing more or doing something differently? Is it going to take massive protests by the people? What's going to change? Well, unfortunately, you're right. All they're concerned about is getting reelected. That is, that is Washington's problem. That's not the country's problem. And unfortunately, what we need to solve our problems is bad politics. 
And so we never get the solutions, we get platitudes, we get quick fixes, we get stimulus, kick the can down the road, sweep, it, sweep the problems under the rug. That's all they care about. They want to get to the next election cycle without it blowing up. But one of these days, it's going to blow up, and there won't be a next election cycle. And I think that's coming up. I think within the next several years, we're going to have the real economic crisis that we didn't have in 2008, that we didn't have in 2002. But the problem is, every time the government stimulates the economy to create an artificial boom to postpone the pain, they make the inevitable bust that much worse. I think we've gotten to the point now where there is no more stimulus to work. There's just overdose. You know, any more government stimulus is going to, we're going to, they're going to destroy the current, the economy with an overdose, which will be hyperinflation. Uh, Peter, there's reality and then there's also hope. When we're talking about reality here, do you think that it's actually going to take the free will of a politi our politicians to change policy? Or do you think it's going to take this uh, future economic crisis that you're talking about in order to actually change things? And by that point, would it be too late? Unfortunately, it's going to take a crisis. I don't think they're going to do the right thing until their backs are really to the wall, until they realize that we're not going to make it to the next election cycle no matter what they do. And so, so finally, they might as well do something in the national interest instead of their own political self-interest. But by then, doing the right thing is going to be that much more painful uh, because of how much longer we've waited. But we're going to have to let interest rates rise dramatically. We're going to have to restore sound money, uh, stop the dollar from, from collapsing, and which means we're going to have to dismantle much of the federal government. And U.S. politicians are going to have to be honest with their electorate and say, we can't keep these promises. We can't make the Social Security payments. We can't make the Medicare payments. We don't have the money. We're broke, and we can't extract it uh, from the younger generations because they'll all leave the country. So they're going to have to have an honest discussion, and there is going to be a big uh, you know, economic decline associated with correcting these imbalances because we have been living beyond our means as a nation for a long time, which means we're going to have to live beneath our means while we replenish our savings and repair our infrastructure and, and have a new industrial revolution. And Peter, very quickly before we go, are you going to run again if they're not listening? Well, I'm not planning on running in 2012, but whether I decide to run, uh, you know, subsequent to that, I don't know. Uh, there's some interesting candidates running in the presidential cycle. Ron Paul, I was involved in that in 2008 as an economic advisor. I was down in South Carolina last week for their first mm -hmm. Republican debates. All right. Well, and uh, so hopefully he'll get a bigger following this time around than he did in 2008. And I'd like to put some of my efforts into trying to help him get elected president. That's a lot more, I think, effective than me being just another senator. All right. Well, thank you for your viewpoint. As always, Peter Schiff, president.